routers or routers, depending on where you live in the world. Ubiquity sell quite a few of them between their Unify Security Gateway line, which is their fully managed software solution, uh, part of their um, Ubiquity um, Software Control Center, and their Edge Mac series or Edge Router series, which is their uh, kind of meant to be more enterprise-y um, ISP level gear. In the past, I've used a couple of things. I've used the Dream Machine, the UMD, Routing, Protect, and does like the UID stuff, the newer stuff. Right now, I actually currently have an Edge Max Infinity installed, which is the uh, the eight times 10 gigabit port router. And I'm actually going to be changing away from that. I'm actually going to go back to using one of these, which is the Unify Infinity. Um, so I'm going to do this quick unboxing and then and, and get it installed and see what it's like. Ubiquity have changed their design again. Excuse the mess. Um, I'm actually rebuilding this rack, which is why we have this new this new gateway. Um, if you've not watched that, check up in the box. It's part of my uh, new home, new rack series. Anyway, back to this. So they've changed the software again. Same to packaging again, sorry. Uh, and they're going much more like eco-friendly with all this paper stuff, which I appreciate. It's uh, much easier for local recycling to recycle like paper than it is to recycle plastic. But standard box, cardboard box, they're just using cardboard now, not printing ink on it, which is fine, which is good. It means it can just basically mulch, you can actually probably just throw it in your compost. Um, so inside here, power cable, standard stuff, quick start guide, hardware kit, the, the wings, the rack, rack wings, which we will be using. And then I guess this is just screws in their little so they made more stuff cardboard, but this is still all foam. It does make wonder though, is it biodegradable by chance? Is it like a biodegradable plastic or foam? I don't know. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. Uh, beyond that, nothing else interesting in that box. Back on onto the main unit. So, oh, interesting. They ship it with a direct attached cable. Huh. I'm pretty sure, I'm 90% sure I did not add that to my order. And the fact that this box is sealed makes me think that this comes with that. So that's cool. So they're gonna give you, and that's really cool because all their switches, all their new switches at least, have a 10 gigabit interconnect. So that just makes it really nice, means I have an extra, I already have direct attach um, SFP plus cables, but the fact they give me one for included is actually pretty nice. $20 kit cable, I'm not gonna say no. It's just some cardboard, and then the unit. This is uh, substantially lighter than the, the Edge, than the Edge Max Infinity, Edge Router Infinity. Using much less polystyrene though, I will give them that. All right, so nicely wrapped up. Standard package. We're gonna start the back first to uh, see what's on the back of this thing. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Standard bag, I'm gonna keep that because I'm weird like that. That's the front, okay. So in the back, we have their USP, which is their Unify supply power thing. And there's like a ribbon cable that goes into like a, a centralized battery management. It's their version of a UPS, right? Um, and they pass like DC power through their cables versus having an AC inverter in here. You have the power in, there's no redundant power supplies. So if the power supply goes in this unit, you're gonna have to replace it. But what they do have is an output that goes to their modem. So someone plugs the, the router, then they're gonna unplug the modem too. So you know, like, no one's gonna accidentally unplug the modem because it's just the, they see a plug plugged to the back of this, they're gonna be like, oh, I shouldn't touch that probably. I wonder if you can remotely turn this on and off. Um, you know, if you need to power cycle, you need to power cycle your modem. So if that's the case, that'd be super nice. Not that you should have to ever power cycle your modem, but just in case, that's pretty handy because sometimes you get need a new IP address or the ISP does something weird or cheap ISP modems, as I'm sure you're aware, just randomly crash. Although when you offload a lot of the work from those ISP modems, they crash far less because they don't get as hot and they're doing way less work. All right, then onto the front. And again, this is a really basic unit, by the way. It's just a router. Oh, they call it UXG Pro. I think the USG next gen was probably I think what they called it before it came out of early access. But yeah, again, got a little screen, which is the same as all the new hardware has now. Reset button on the bottom left here. WAN ports at the top here, number one and number three. You have a one gigabit port, standard RJ45 and then an SFP plus port, which goes up to 10 gigabit. And then on the bottom here, we have our LAN ports. And then we have again, same RJ45. So we've got two and four, the RJ45, and then a 10 gigabit uh, LAN port. So what you do, I'll show you very quickly. It's super simple. Most people wear this stuff out. You take a little adapter. This just goes into there. I have it the wrong way around. Good start. And then this would go into your switch above. And now you have a 10 gigabit link between the two. Let's go and install it. Got my pre-installed rack studs here, um, which are these like red and yellow things. 
Um, so configuration here, for when we're done, is going to be my 48 port pro switch here, which is um, which explained in a different video. And then I have my USG US aggregate switch. I actually can't remember the code name for it, which is explained in a different video. And then I'm going to have this. And then I'm going to have this router uh, here. So it's going to be router, then my aggregate switch, and a 48 port switch. This aggregate switch will then run down to the servers down below. Um, we'll also connect to this switch here, and then going to go up over the head to this other rack to my my old rack here, which is going to be a media and IoT rack. So let's get this installed. And if you don't know why I'm using rack studs, then you definitely go Google what they are and why why you want to use them. Um, the reality is it just makes so much life so much easier because it gives you posts first. You can let the unit hang there because it's got posts sticking out. It makes it much easier to install stuff versus before you have to hold it there, get a screw going in there and light it up and you're holding, holding this heavy thing. These things are amazing. And it's just so much easier to work with. And one thing I have noticed, because they're like machined, they're actually like engineered correctly, they perfectly fit in the holes. So that means everything is perfectly spaced. So things above and below don't knock into each other. You don't have to like loosen this thing up and push it up. All right, let me go to the back here. Got a pair of magic pass by up above it behind the rack here. There will be a UPS going in below here. This goes into the back, let's apply like that. And now you should see the light coming from hopefully. Let's have a look. Yes, there we go. USG Pro is starting. Now, I'm not gonna plug this into my internet connection yet, because people in the house and I need this configured first before I just kind of switch things over. So I'm hoping I'm gonna plug this into my other switch over there. See the light came on there, so say it's picked up a signal. Um, then I want this, hopefully it's gonna be able to see the internet um, and see my controller, um, and then hopefully it will get configured We'll see. So let's go up to my computer and let's go do a screen cap. Unfortunately, when I plugged in, I plugged in the US UXG into my um, LAN connection on the LAN ports on the internet, so I could connect my this network to the LAN port of the, the new router. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work. It got confused and I was trying to hit the IP address it gave me, but it was not letting me talk to it, um, probably because it was giving a random IP address in that range. I didn't know what, what it was. Um, so after I, I plugged my I plugged the my WAN port into the USG UXG sorry uh, so the WAN went to my existing network and then the and then I plugged my laptop directly into the LAN port so I could see what DHCP address it gave me as you can see here it's giving me a 102.168.1 address um, which was Y so then I basically gave it a 10.10.1.1 um, but then I realized that was not a good idea because that's the same internal network and same IP address as my internal network. So then I caused some issues where I couldn't then talk to it um, because <laughs> um, you can't have the same WAN address and the same internal IP address. Um, it, the routers get confused and they don't know how to route. So I eventually managed to, I disconnected them. You disc what you do in this situation is you disconnect the WAN port so it loses its connection and you go in and reconfigure it. And in this case, I went and reconfigured it and gave it a 10, a 10, 10, 2 address. And then we were a little bit more off to the races then. Um, <clears throat> I did notice it took a really long time to apply and reconfigure these, which is not unusual, but I'm, I'm guessing it's either doing some internal service reboot or something and it's trying to like connect to the outside world. So it took a really long time to do that. And eventually it found it could eventually connect to the internet, even though it was complaining it couldn't. It could always connect to the internet because as soon as it, the WAN port was connected to my internal network, it had access to the internet. Um, so I logged in, logged in with my UI account. Um, you, I think, I didn't actually try, but I'm, thinking you can I'm hoping you can define my external cloud controller um, without having to sign in. Um, I didn't actually double check that. Um, if someone knows in the comments, please post it so I can pin it. Um, but I, after I logged in and gave it all my details, I selected my controller, which it knew because it was they're all single sign-on, um, and then gave it the site I wanted to adapt it to, and then it started adopting. Um, so then once I got internet connection back on my laptop, um, you can eventually see it, it asked me to re-log in to the controller, which I thought was odd, but I don't know if there's a big change or something weird going on, but I find Ubiquiti seems to ask me to log in a lot, unfortunately, which is really frustrating. Like, 
I, and I have it set to like 24 hours or two, I mean, it might be more than that, but it seems to like ask you to log in like every time I try to access it. Great for security, a pain in the ass for um, like just trying to get stuff done. Um, the good news was that as soon as I got through to there, I it saw, it, saw it adopted it and then it started appearing all the details in there, which is great. So you picked up the ISP, which I'm really impressed about. I started an update. And the main thing from here, there's plenty of videos that you had to update your network, so I'm not going to go too much into that. There, there is a cat on my lap. He seems to want to just join me. Um, so if you hear purring, that's him. The, the main thing I really cared about was in the internet connection settings here, um, these are wrong. These are not my, these are just picking up the DHCP from my other internal, my current internal network, so I don't break everything. Um, what I want to care about is this additional IP addresses down here. I use PPPoE and it still let me add additional IP addresses and that's the, the main thing I really cared about. And this, this wasn't visible until I actually added the UXG Pro um, before, before I even did a pre-configuration to see what it looked like and none of that stuff was there. Hello, thank you. None of that stuff was there. Um, so I'm glad that's appeared and when Centrelink finally pull the thumbs out of their rear ends um, I'll grab my um, block of IP addresses back again so then I can assign them to my other internal sub networks. Um, so yeah, that is it. Hopefully that gives you a quick rundown. Um, it wasn't as simple as I was hoping it to be but that's mostly because my, um, my use case was not quite standard. You would you'd always plug your WAN into the WAN and then and then you plug your laptop into the LAN port or your LAN into your switch and then go from there. So I was trying to be a little bit more complicated than that. But it does beg the question, if my WAN port was, an ex was not, uh, oh, I think, yeah, I think it gave me the option on the initial page to configure the WAN port so you could set up PPOE and, and whatnot. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me today and hopefully I answered or gave you some insight into how that US UXG Pro works. Um, wasn't quite a smooth setup as I initially anticipated but then I'm kind of trying to not do a usual configuration. Um, anyway, any questions ask me in the comments and I'll try and answer what I can. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.